Are you seeking private financing for an investment property in a rural area and finding that most lenders won't consider it? In this video, I'll explain why most private lenders won't consider rural locations, but I'll also tell you about a few exceptions and scenarios where it may be possible to get a rural property loan from private lending companies, also known as hard money lenders or bridge lenders. I'm Rocky Batani, founder of PrivateLenderLink.com, where investors and brokers can easily find direct private lending companies. If you're in the investment real estate business and want to gain insights into private mortgage lending, subscribe to our channel and get notified every time we release a new video. The reason that most private lenders won't consider a rural property really comes down to the worst case scenario, which is a default by the borrower that leads to foreclosure and eventually having to take back the property. Most lenders that end up owning a foreclosed property will immediately try to sell it to recoup their loss. And rural properties have fewer potential buyers than urban areas, so it could take a long time to sell. Meanwhile, the lender will incur a lot of costs to hold and manage that property. If the lender has to visit the property, that could take a lot of extra travel time. If the property needs to be renovated before going on the market for sale, it may be challenging to find contractors that are willing to drive to that rural area. All the cost to manage the asset prior to the sale could be higher than it would be for an urban area. All of these factors means a loan secured by a rural property bears a greater risk for private lenders. Although the general rule is that private lenders won't consider rural locations, there are some exceptions. Typically, the lenders that do consider rural properties are ones that only lend in one state or a region covering a few select states. Rural property loans typically have higher interest rates and more conservative loan-to-values than loans secured by urban properties. If a lender's maximum loan-to-value is 65% for most of their loans, the maximum would likely be 50% LTV for rural properties. In a declining real estate market or recession, the maximum LTB could be much lower, say 30 to 40% of the appraised value. In addition to the lower loan to value, a real estate investor with a rural property will likely have to pay a higher interest rate and fees. A lender that typically charges 10% interest for most loans will likely go up to 12% for rural properties. And if their origination fee is typically two points for most deals, they may increase that to three points for a rural property loan. Although private mortgages are generally qualified based on equity in the subject property, lenders considering a rural property loan may dig deep into the borrower's finances by looking at tax returns and verifying income. Lenders may also want to put a lien on other properties owned by the borrower. In some states, lenders can take a second position lien on the additional collateral instead of refinancing the first mortgage, provided there is enough equity in the property. The idea with the additional collateral is the borrower would be less willing to default on the loan if they are at risk of losing more than just a rural property. As with most private mortgages, the exit strategy is one of the most important factors for lenders to determine if they'd consider a rural property. Private mortgages are short-term loans, and all lenders want to know how the loan will be paid off. Will the subject property be sold? Do you plan to refinance into a long-term conventional loan? If so, will you qualify for that conventional loan before the end of the loan term? Just be prepared to present your exit strategy to the lender when you apply. Each private lender has their own way of defining whether a property is rural. Some use the location's population density per square mile. Private lending companies that lend nationally may use the U.S. Census or Department of Agriculture guidelines. Most lenders take a very simple approach of looking at the property on a map to determine whether they consider the property to be urban, suburban, or rural. Many times the entire city or town is rural because it's far away from the greater metropolitan area. However, some large cities like Los Angeles or Dallas have rural areas within their city limits, which many lenders will not consider. On the other hand, a rural area may be in a popular vacation spot, which many lenders will consider. If you're ready to search for a rural property lender, use our website privatelenderlink.com as a resource. All the private lending companies listed on the site have a very detailed profile that shows their lending guidelines and you can contact each lender directly. Now it may not be obvious whether the lender will consider a rural property, so if you'd like us to review your deal and make recommendations, click the Create a Loan Request button. Provide some information about the deal for us to review and we'll invite a few select lenders to look at it. If you found the content in this video to be useful, please click the like button and be sure to check out our other videos about private mortgage lending. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.